Hello everybody. With my airplane uh, done, I uh, want to show you uh, a walk around, around the plane, to see the, the details. But I first want to uh, mention that I uh, got my airworthiness certificate uh, in. So uh, I first did a, a registration, which is a, a form for the, uh, the registration of the airplane. It's this one here. It, uh, it was necessary to do for the, uh, the, the paint job to finish first, because apparently the markings should be on there when you, um, when you want to uh, request for a certificate of registration. Another form you need to know to get is um, a, a noise uh, requirement. Uh, fortunately, this is an RV-7, so it's an aerobatic plane, and uh, there are no noise requirements for aerobatic planes, which will give you a little bit more costs when landing, but uh, landing fees are higher that, that way, but uh, it's only uh, minimal. The other last thing is a, uh, a radio station license. I'm sorry for the Dutch government making a typo on the word license, but okay, it's the Dutch government, so... Um, um, yeah, that's also one need. Uh, and then, of course, when everything is ready, and you've got your inspection uh, correct, you can get this one, the Airworthiness Certificate. So this is the, the little piece of paper which uh, allows me to go actually into the air. To receive this, you need to uh, send about 15 documents to the government, including the ones I showed you earlier, and also some uh, requests and some specifications. Uh, you need to include a, a pilot's operating handbook. So this one here, uh, you need to include a, a, a maintenance manual. Uh, that all needs to be in, in, in order. And uh, the most important thing is an inspection. So the NVAV, the, the Dutch um, Association of uh, Amateur uh, Airplane Builders, they have their own inspectors, which are licensed engineers, and, uh, and they take a day, they, they visit you, and they go you know, from top to bottom, from left to right, front, aft, all the way. Uh, you need to open all the, uh, the excess um, plates, and uh, yeah, they, they'll inspect your plane. And if they think it's uh, good, they do some special some special tests, let's put it that way. Uh, for instance, they, 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 they check the, um, the angles of the, the elevators and the ailerons and stuff like that, so all the, the minimum and maximums for that. And if they, are, um, if they think it's a good plane, then they sign it off. You send all everything up to the, to the government and uh, they will get you the, your worth of, a worth of a certificate. So I'm really glad with that. So now we can, uh, we can actually fly after four years of work, so that's good. Uh, let's do a, a walk around and uh, I'll show you some details of the, of the airplane. So let's start on the, the left side. Um, we go to, to the first check, which is the, uh, the static port. There are two of them, one on the left side, one on the right side. Uh, in case one gets jammed, then at least we have another one for backup. Uh, horizontal stabilizers, which you can see that it's there. There is a, a special wrap on the, uh, the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. I did that to, uh, to protect the, the paint, because it's the, the, the area which is most uh, hit by uh, you know, bugs and other stuff, and dirt. Uh, so I did that, I also did it on the wings, we'll see that later. The uh, elevator, now the elevator uh, has a, um, an electronic uh, trim tab. There are two versions, you can have a vans with a um, mechanical or manual trim tab and an electronic trim tab. I, uh, I, I opted for the electronic trim tab because I, it's more convenient. Also, it's push work activated <coughs> and um, there is an excess plate there. I, I made an option there to create a, a hole with um, some plexiglass in it. This way I can always check the nut of the, um, of the push rod that, uh, that pulls against the, uh, the, ho the horn of the, uh, of the elevator. So I can take it every flight instead of, let's say, Yearly, when you open up the X plate, uh, I think that's, that's important to do that. Uh, vertical stabilizer and the, the rudder. The rudder is uh, the only uh, control surface that is actuated by cable, um, and it is directly connected, as you can see, to the uh, to the tailwheel uh, by change and, and, uh, and a spring. Uh, initially, the spring was. No pulling, it, was, it wasn't even loaded, I mean the, the, the chain was too loose and uh, I tried some high taxi, uh, high taxi, high speed taxis on the runway and uh, it turned out that uh, I got some uh, tail in the chain. So I drilled in the collar first, I tried to uh, um, uh, shorten the chain, but that was too much actually, and it was way too tight. 
and the, and the rudder uh, that uh, that connects the chain, and now I can I can do it by half, right? So I can uh, I can change the whole or take out a whole a uh, whole uh, clip from the chain and then uh, change the holes again. So that's good. Uh, as you can see, the rudder is uh, directly connected to a tail up to a specific point. If you, uh, if you go over the point, as you can see here, then now the tail wheel is loose. Uh, and of course, if you click it in again, now it's again connected to the tail. Uh, there's a tail light on there. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of summarizes the, uh, the impenage. Okay, then we go to the wings. So, the right wing. There's a wing in the wall. It's uh, the only part of the wing you can stand on. Uh, there are several ribs beneath it, so uh, the wing is uh, stronger there because of the extra ribs, and it's the only part when you can stand on the wing. What you shouldn't stand on is the flap. Uh, it's now completely retracted. Uh, that's probably making it easier to uh, stand up on the, on the wing, uh, especially when you when you exit. Uh, some people tend to step on the on the wing, so uh, it's better to lower it when people uh, get out of the plane. And uh, there is of course the, uh, the aileron. The aileron uh, which is also push rod actuated. And uh, yeah we checked for the, uh, the, the angles and uh, it looks uh, really good. So it's nice. The uh, wing are uh, riveted to the wing. You could opt for using screws to make the wing bit detachable, but I didn't see any use for it. There are no special things in uh, my wing tips, uh, and uh, the lighting, uh, it's easy to, uh, to access from, from this part, so there's no problem there. Uh, I could even remove the lights and then uh, enter the, um, the wing tip. Of course, if you would ruin the wing tip or just break it, then maybe it's easier to, to put a new one on there, probably true. Uh, maybe if that happens, I, I, would, I would then make it uh, detachable. But for now, it's uh, fixed. What I said earlier, the um, the uh, leading edge of the wing is, has a special uh, special tape on it, special wrapping. So it's transparent, um, so it protects the wing, and it's easier to clean. Uh, of course, there is the uh, fuel pump. And there is a special uh, wing tie-down ring here. It's not the standard Vans one. Uh, I, I bought one from Cleveland because uh, this one is uh, nicer. Um, and of course, there's the ring. So we've got the ring here. And we've got, I'm not sure if you can see it there, it's the uh, transponder, uh, very small transponder uh, antenna. As you can see, there are no uh, wheel pens on it right now. Um, I do that because uh, in the first flight, I'm not sure, uh, well, there's not really a use of wheel pens, it's mostly aerodynamics. And this way I have more, uh, I won't break them, <laughs> that's one thing, and I have more control and vision over my, uh, my brakes and other stuff, so that's good. Uh, I heard some people that make uh, hard landings, that you could, the, the, the tire could kind of bulge up and then uh, break your wheel pens. So for the first time, maybe it's better to fly without the loop bench. Uh, so that's the idea. The engine, so I've got the top cowl removed. Uh, this is the uh, UL Power 520 ISA. The A stands for um, aerobatic, so that means it has a, uh, an inverted oil system. Uh, and it also has a flop tube in the left tank, uh, which allows it to have a sustained inverted flight. The S uh, of uh, ISA is for uh, high compression um, and it needs at least uh, 97 octane. So you can uh, put MoGas in there. We have uh, Euro 98 in, uh, in the Netherlands and you know, throughout Europe. It, it has 5% um, ethanol in there, uh, but there are um, stations that, that create special uh, versions, special blends of uh, 98 that don't have ethanol in there mostly for performance cars because uh, yeah, it would ruin your, your injectors and stuff like that because of the, the, the uh, hygroscopical uh, uh, characteristics of, uh, of ethanol and it could uh, give corrosion so that's not good it's actually also not good for cars but hey um, 
There is a, um, there are two ignition coils. So uh, all the spark plugs, every cylinder has its own spark plug. Has, own, has two spark plugs, and uh, every spark plug of every cylinder is on a different coil. There are two batteries in here. You can see them probably, but there are two batteries in here. And um, and there is a, a, a brake fluid a reservoir, which also has a special cap, so that if you have a sustained inverted flight, <laughs> that you won't lose all your, your brake fluid. Uh, it's a six-cylinder, uh, really nice engine. It produces 200 uh, horsepower, and it's uh, well way enough for, for this uh, this machine. Um, I think there is the turbo version is now also available, which produces probably 230, but that's ludicrous uh, for this, uh, this type of airplane, so uh, that's not a problem. Um, there is an extension um, bar in here, you probably cannot see it, but there is a, an extension bar in there, and uh, it extends the engine 8 inches forward, um, because this is the standard Lycoming uh, engine mount, uh, Dynafocal engine mount of, uh, that you get in your van's um, finish kit. Uh, you could directly connect that, the dual power engine to that, um, but it has uh, it doesn't work for the RV7 because um, this engine is so light, it's, it's probably 40 or maybe even 50 kilos lighter than a Lycoming. Uh, it, it, it would bring your CG uh, completely aft, so it, th th there's no way to, that you can fly that plane. Uh, so you have to extend it forward to get the, the moment of the engine uh, uh, bigger. Uh, I calculated it should be about 20 centimeters. Um, that was exactly the same as the eight inches that uh, that Vance, uh, that, uh, that um, dual power came up. So uh, this is the standard inch, uh, eight inch extension. In hindsight, I think it's better to uh, to have a nine inch version uh, because because now um, if you would if you would stow uh, the baggage compartment to the max, like a hundred pounds. And you would have two really, really, really big guys in there, like 250 pounds each. And you don't put almost no fuel in there, then you would uh, run out of your RCG. You could say, well, that's a very um, uh, strange situation, but hey, uh, still, you can run out of it. There's no way you can run out your, your, your CG on the forward side. So I think if, if I would do it again, I would probably calculate another inch in there, so nine inches of extension, uh, make the, lo the nose even longer, which I don't mind because this is already a, a, lo a much longer nose than a normal uh, RV, but I like uh, I like planes with a long nose, so that's good. Uh, it's taste, of course. Um, but yeah, next time I would do uh, a 9-inch extension there. As you can see, there's a lot of room in here. So uh, normally in RVs, uh, because the, the engine is like 20 centimeters back, it's all very cramped, but here it's very spacious. Um, there could be a, a, a turbo or intercooler in here even if, if you want to, but uh, yeah. So it's a little bit different than a Lycoming engine. Uh, with a Lycoming engine you have a kind of a controlled alternator or controlled generator in there, which, which uh, if, you, if you require more, uh, if, if actually the, the, uh, uh, the RPMs of the engine goes up, then it kind of dims the, uh, the output. Here it's not the case. This is a much simpler system. It's, uh, it, actually, I think the UL Power engine is, is based around simplicity. It's, it's just a generator, uh, and it generates just standard, uh, it's just static, you could say. So it, uh, it, on low um, RPMs, like um, maybe 1,000 RPMs, it would produce something like 17 volts, hardly enough to, to charge a battery. But if you go to to uh, 2500, it, it would produce uh, I think 30 or maybe even 34 volts that I measured, so it, uh, it goes up there. And there's a special regulator in there, and that regulator uh, brings it back to uh, 14, 14 half volts and charges the, uh, the batteries. Uh, first I did that with, with uh, diodes between the, uh, the regulator and the batteries. Uh, that way I could, if one battery would explode or something like that, right, then the other one is still, can still be charged. Uh, but actually, it turned out this, this is a smart regulator. I found it out the hard way uh, because it didn't charge my batteries, uh, which I was found strange. And it turns out that it needs to be at least directly to the battery uh, to sense it. It, it, it. Or maybe it, it requires 12 volts to operate, I'm not sure. 
Anyway, you cannot uh, connect it with a diode. It, needs, it should be directly to a battery. So I connected the regulator directly to the battery that charges the... Um, that actually is the start, goes to the starter uh, motor. And uh, the other one is with a diode. So, um, yeah, sufficient, I guess. In the front, we have an uh, Airmaster uh, constant speed propeller. It is an electrical uh, actuated propeller because uh, the UL power engines don't allow a, a hydraulic system in there. So it's uh, electrical. Uh, it is a little bit smaller than, uh, let's say, your standard RV7 propeller. And the reason is that the UL power engine is able to, um, to turn 300 rounds per minute. So it has a, it's, uh, it has a lot of uh, high, high uh, RPM, and uh, so the blades are a little bit smaller. Uh, Airmaster created this, uh, this propeller specifically for the dual power engine, so that's, uh, that's nice. It fits it, fits it really uh, nice. Um, there are three air intakes on the forward side, so there are the two of the, uh, the engine. And there's one for the uh, oil cooler. We have uh, sensors um, for cylinder heat temperature. There are also sensors down there for exhaust gas temperature. Uh, they all go up here to the um, to the EMS, so we can check them. And on this side, uh, there is um, this oil air separator. It's a special one uh, because, again, it's uh, it needs to uh, sustain um, inverted flight. So this is an oil air separator that uh, that changes if you go upside down. Um, yeah, there's an air filter in here, uh, and that's it, I guess. Uh, it's uh, what I said earlier, right? It's uh, it doesn't have that much um, components. Um, well, there is of course a uh, cabin heat uh, installation in there, but you cannot well you can't see it. But it's also not attached yet because um, I didn't come to that and I thought I would have uh, I thought I would I take the winter for that but unfortunately it's already winter so um, uh, I'll, I'll do it somewhere uh, next year uh, if I want to fly now I just uh, take extra pants with me or something like that so the left wing is uh, of course identical to the right wing the only difference is uh, the pita tube um, and the angle of the back tube uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the only difference. And of course, we have here on this side, we have the uh, radio antenna instead of the uh, transponder antenna. The rest are identical. Let's check the inside. The rest of the walk around will be continued in part two. Okay, continuing building my pie in the sky.